There we go. We in game? Alright, there we go. Awesome. Hello, guys. Welcome back to another one versus one expert game. This will be the last 1v1 of the day before we watch a 3v3 and then go into community games. Uh, this one is between Juan once again and Cupcake. Uh, Cupcake is 8th Wonder, for those of you who might be interested or remotely care. But, um... After seeing Juan play that last game, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how he plays this one because that was a great play by him and I, yeah, I enjoyed watching that a lot. That was a very, very enjoyable game to watch even after the sort of stale build-up after the Fast Castle kind of play. And also, he won even though he had his boar stolen, which to me is a, a victory in itself. So, uh, yes, this map is uh, El Dorado. It's a map made by Gentle, and it is pretty weird. Uh, I've sh shown this map a few times on the stream, but I believe this is the latest version of the map, which does include two small um, stone piles and two small gold piles at their town centers. The old version of this map didn't have any gold or stone at each TC, and that led players to only do one strategy on this map, which was rush the middle and go for the gold and stone that's in the center. Other than this, and the gold and stone at their uh, bases, there is actually no other gold or stone on the map, so it's obviously really important to get center control. Now I've got to say, little cupcake here is, um, a little bit close to the center for my liking. This map does not seem overly fair given the map generation and just how close he is to this. Uh, it's it's kind of a shame because it, map generation can be so pivotal in how a game goes down. I mean, even a player like the Viper can lose if the map is bad. And we've seen it happen before, uh, especially on Nomad games. I mean, he's lost like three Nomad games in the last three weeks that I've seen, um, just because he's had a really bad map, or he's not, you know, been able to scout properly, but mostly due to the, the terrible map. So, a little bit unfair with this placement, but Juan being Juan, after that last game, I believe that he could do absolutely anything. So yes, uh, these fish are certainly quirky. They are uh, swordfish, and they are just jumping out of the sand, apparently. Um, starting with this means that you get a really nice food boost. The Fish basically replace boar. No, oh, sorry, they don't replace boar, but I think they replace one of the boar to be more precise. I think there is only one boar uh, at each TC. And that obviously is because you've got these big fish here, which contribute quite a lot to your food economy in the early game. Villagers gather from these things incredibly fast, and uh, there's a lot of early game food available, as well as, of course, the sheep, which are around and about. There's also a berry patch, and there's also a deer patch, but the there is only one boar, as I say, replaced by the two big fish. It basically means that you're guaranteed to have a good feudal age, I mean dark age. In my opinion, I don't think you can really have a bad dark age on this map, because how how is it possible? I mean, you, you even if you don't find your sheep immediately, you have got the fish. It buys you some time to get the scouting done. And for that reason, I think that um, it's, it's a nice map for the early game. It's uh, always giving you, always going to guarantee a nice start. So, another thing to note as well, given that these fish exist, it means that this has to be like a shallows kind of thing, or like a um, like a water terrain, as well as a land terrain. It's kind of weird to explain, but um, as a result, you can't actually build farms on this patch, of this square patch. You see the square patch at each town centre, you cannot build farms on that. And as a result, that does force players to have a pretty wide set economy, uh, pretty wide, a pretty widespread economy. And that can cause some problems. It can certainly make raiding really, really valuable. We see Juan actually walling up here on the left side pretty quickly. He's still not found two of these sheep, in fact, which is a shame. But uh, he is walling up across this right-hand side. He's walling up across the left. And I think that's actually a pretty clever thing to do. Because, like I said, this map can be really open. Players can have a really difficult time defending from raiding. And uh, walling up is a great way to kind of deal with that. The trees, although they're fairly sparse, they are quite common. So it looks like, you know, he's able to wall this pretty comfortably. And that's kind of good for him, I suppose. So 8th Wonder now doing Loom. And sometimes you see a Drush on this map. But I think Drushing on this map is kind of not as useful as it used to be. When there was only... 
um, golden stone in the centre and not these little small patches back at their ba bases. Drushing was probably a lot more common, but now I feel like it's kind of a little bit silly. Cupcake is up to the feudal age on 19 population, which is 18 villagers. So like I said, there's plenty of food to go around. There's a lot of early game food as well, and uh, that can give you uh, a really good feudal time, like we can see right here. Uh, by the way, Persians here versus Persians. I don't think I actually introduced the civs. It is a Persian war, which I like. I like that. I like that a lot. I like the Persians. I think they're great. I love to see war elephants coming out in a 1v1. You don't see it too often, but they can be really effective if they if they do make it out onto the map. Nightbringer, yeah, you're right. Uh, the map is pretty unfair. I mean, blue... His berries are like as, as close to the middle as this TC. And you look at the difference there. It's it's a pretty big difference, but I think when it comes down to map control, you either have it or you don't. So the the distance to the middle, I don't think is so important. I think it would be a bigger deal if, let's say, Juan's gold was bugged. That would be a bigger deal than being further away from the middle, uh, because like I said, if you have map control, your opponent's kind of locked in their base. So it's kind of a you either have it or you don't kind of thing. And at the moment, Juan walling up, it's kind of like, well, he's kind of given away the map control a little bit as well anyway. So we got barracks coming up from Little Cupcake right now. Um, and uh, that, of course, could lead into an archery range. It could lead into a stable. Either way, uh, he could also be doing a fast castle. I mean, he probably won't do a fast castle because he's not taking any gold. But, I mean, with this huge amount of food here, I think a fast castle is certainly viable. And for Juan, I mean, he could get away with doing a fast castle here as well. But he's not taking his deer. And as a result, I don't think we will see that. Only time will tell. Juan, unfortunately, losing his scout there. And we see a stable here from Cupcake as well. Uh, eighth wonder, by the way. And, um... <laughs> You guys are so confused. You're just like, oh, what's going on? Why is there a, why is there fish in the water, in, in the sand? I, I think that's gonna cause a few stirs of intrigue when it comes to playing uh, the WSVG championship thing. This is from the WSVG map pack, by the way. So scouts coming out, and Eighth Wonder letting himself down a little bit here because he's not scouted. And you know, pushing yourself, pushing the deers in towards your TC is all well and good, but you do sacrifice scouting information, and scouting information is really important. So you can see a little cupcake here is not going to find his way through the walls, and he's going to be really sad, and he's going to cry about it. No, he won't cry about it, but he obviously is going to be slightly annoyed that he's investing resources into scouts. And he's not going to be able to make much of it. So, you see, he's made one scout. He's realized, actually, it's kind of walled off here. And he's not making any more in a hurry. He's seen the full wall. He might now assume that it's going to be some kind of, like, fast castle from Juan. And I think Juan's being very clever. Because he is making his opponent think that he is fast castling. When in reality, he is not. He's also making scouts himself. And he's continuing to re-wall up behind it. I don't really like to see a wall and boom style play. But at the same time, uh, I think Juan is trying to catch his opponent off guard. So you see Eighth Wonder kind of circling around. He's been on a watchtower here. I mean, come on, dude. Uh, actually, no, 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 no. That's not a bad place. Sorry, my bad. I thought that was a terrible location for a minute, but it's not. Because it's actually in range of this gold. Um, I was going to say, he, if he'd put it there and there was no gold there, I would have said, yeah, that's a stupid place. But it actually does make sense. Because it does cover this gold. So that kind of could throw Juan a curveball a little bit when it comes to taking some gold here. But still, I mean, he's playing really passive. Just one scout cavalry at the moment. It seems like he's struggling for food a bit as well. But I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll see another scout queued up now. Maybe we'll see a spear or not. Maybe he'll just, I don't know. Build up his eco behind these walls. Villager count. Juan is two ahead at the moment. Which isn't bad, actually. And I'm wondering if 8th Wonder yeah, really, I don't know, has a plan in this situation. Whether he's going to try and break down these walls or if he's got some other idea. So Juan here, I think this is, again, quite clever. He's showing that blacksmith there. 8th Wonder will see the blacksmith and he's going to know, actually. If he sees the blacksmith, he will know that he's not clicked up to the castle edge yet. Which could be a small tell about what's going on. But... Man, it seems so odd to me that he's got no no economy here, really. It feels like he's got no economy. Obviously, he has. 
but it feels really, really slow at this point. I, uh, I don't know, it's kind of caught me off guard a little bit, but those scouts are coming out. He'll probably delete that palisade or something and just run through with a counter attack because, generally speaking, when a player doesn't wall up, Sorry, when a player does wall up, the other player tends not to wall up, and that can catch them off guard a little bit. And in fact, if we did see some scouts coming in on the front, we could see a lot of damage there. Cupcake doing a spearman though, not getting too complacent behind here, and still though, letting his stable stay idle. Doing wheelbarrow right now, and we should see a good castle time from him. He's taking some stone, he's probably going to move these guys onto uh, gold, but... In fact, doing a watchtower on the front as well. And I, I guess that kind of is a little bit lame, just how close he is here. Which is a shame, but oh well. Oh well. So let's see, how many scouts has Juan got out? He's got three, he's building a fourth right now. And he's definitely, definitely playing a counter-attack right here. But for Juan, losing a villager on this blacksmith is kind of messy. And as a result as well, he's still unable to get the gold. But I think he doesn't really want this gold. I think he wants to do scouts. And I think he wants to break out and take the gold in the center of the map. Uh, which would be risky because it is very far from his town center. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, obviously, he doesn't know what's going on outside of his walls either. For all he knows. Uh, actually, actually, my bad, guys. I'm a fool. I'm an idiot and a fool because... I forgot. One of the things about this map as well is that the center is always visible. Every player can always see the center at all times. So Juan knows. He knows exactly what's going on here. He can see through the fog of war. And even though, yes, he is walled into his base, he can see the middle of the map. So he knows there's a tower there. He knows there's villagers taking gold and stone. I mean, we're on fog of war on for Juan right now. And that's what he can see. So I think this could be really clever from him. So we'll see what happens. At the moment, the military count is obviously in Juan's favor since Cupcake didn't make any more. He made one more spearman back here. It looks like he will go for the castle age fairly soon. He is still taking precautions, however. He is doing Town Watch right now. Town Watch, of course, will give him more line of sight. And Juan, again, going to have to be a little careful here. Because if he shows these scouts too early, then he might be spotted running across the center of the map. He could be spotted by this scout here. He might decide to go out this way, maybe, and go around the back so that he doesn't get spotted out and it doesn't give Cupcake time to build more spearmen. Either way, he's doing bloodlines, he's got plus one defense, he's got seven scouts out. This could be really interesting. Yeah, Europe in the chat says 8th Wonder should wall Juan in. That is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. In fact, Mr. Danish, one of, um, one of his videos from a long while ago, I think showcased a video of him doing, uh, or a player doing just that. So out Juan goes. And uh, meanwhile, Cupcake clicks up to the castle age. Juan has plus one defense, he's got bloodlines. And he is in a perfect position to do a lot of eco damage. Cupcake gonna try and wall up here, his scout blocked things off. These houses are really low on HP though, so he could take them out if he focuses them. Instead, he might wanna run round. Cupcake now walling up as fast as he can to prevent these scouts from doing any damage. If this wall off is successful, it could be huge, but there's a hole! There is always a hole! And Cupcake now gonna get surrounded pretty quick. That Spearman will get taken out very quickly as well. It landed one, two shots, and that's done. Oh man, two towers going up though, and that's gonna make it a little bit difficult to, to really fight in there. Juan, meanwhile, going to be looking for some other opportunities. He'll see the gold. That's not being taken. He's heading around the right side, perhaps looking for some farms, maybe looking for some wood. And there is some wood back here, but it's being walled in. So, damn, as excited as I was for that strategy from Juan, I feel a little disappointed because it hasn't been too successful. Do you know what he could do right now, though? He could take down his TC. I know he's the Persians. Is it, in fact, it's a shame he's the Persians, because if, um, if Cupcake wasn't Persians here, he'd be able to take down that TC with his scouts, because there's no villagers inside of it, which is kind of amusing. Um, it's a shame that that is not the case. Instead, he's going to whack away on these walls, 
And I feel like now Juan might be in a little bit of trouble. He's uh, not got any gold. He can't take the gold here. He's not got any stone. So he's starting to take stone now. He might end up selling stone to go up to the castle age. Who knows? On the wood line at the back, he's trying to work his way through. But of course, Cupcake's up to castle now. And we're going to see knights coming out. So those scouts... Unfortunately, have been rather unsuccessful, and I mean that is a real shame because it was a great, great idea. It just didn't work out in his favor. And uh, Juan got to lose the scout on the left side, the TC in the center of the map, going up for Cupcake. And oh man, the map generation you can't deny is certainly giving him a bit of an advantage right here. A couple of towers right here and here. Map control is basically his. So Cupcake out with his knights then, or knight, and uh, that's going to be annoying to deal with. He could take that knight down if he surrounds it and kills it off. He could do that, but I don't think he's going to do that. He's going to maybe look for another angle. Maybe he'll keep these guys alive and upgrade to light cavalry. That could be very good. Um, but we will see whether he decides to do that or not. At the moment, he's actually building another stable. Yeah. We will see whether he does that. He will do that. He is going to run away with these guys. Because I say, he could kill that knight now, right, right now if he wants to. But instead of potentially losing some scouts, he's going to add more stables. And he's actually going to do light cavalry as soon as he gets up to the castle age. This is like a really risky strategy. But still, he doesn't need the gold. And like I said, he did use his market there to get up to the castle age here. But like I say, this is a pretty risky game. He's got a lot of farming going on. His economy back here is completely safe, and it looks like he's just going to play full trash, which is going to be quite interesting to see. Juan, uh, going to have a huge military advantage, I feel. I mean, he's still got double the military right now. Light cavalry fully upgraded versus unupgraded knights. That will work. That will work quite well. And meanwhile, Cupcake just adding in his little third DC at the back. I wonder if, I really, I do wonder if Juan is going to throw this or not. I mean, these scouts, the thing is, it is a risky strategy. Because he will only be playing off one TC. But it legitimately could work out. And I want to see this work out right now. Because, you know, after that last game, after this really bad map generation, I'm kind of rooting for Juan, I'm not going to lie. So he's up to Castle. Let's see that light cab upgrade. Never mind. <laughs> Where is it, dude? He doesn't have it. He's not got the resources just yet. He will have the resources in just a minute. At the moment, doing handcart. And look at that, right? Handcart coming straight in. That was his priority there. He spent all that food and all that wood on handcart. And do you know why? Because he is going to be going pure scouts and a oh, light cavalry when he's done the upgrade. So that handcart upgrade will make his farms more efficient. That's the most important thing. It's going to be so important to do that. So light cavalry, where is it? It's coming in any second now. Scouts at the back getting two villager kills. Could come down here and get more. He could go for more defense upgrades, but there's light cavalry first. We might see plus two defense coming in in just a moment. But yeah, I mean, like, like I say, with, uh, with light cavalry do being done, or when that gets done, with the defense and attack upgrades, he honestly, honestly can actually take these knights down. Um, but can he take down camels? Well, Cupcake bringing out some camels right now. He still, I don't think, realizes that there's three stables behind here. So he doesn't quite know how much he's dealing with. And if he doesn't make a lot of camels, one camel is simply not going to be enough. Still, his economy is really pulling ahead. Uh, he's got 49 villagers now versus 43 of Juan. And obviously now being up to 3 TCs versus 1 is a big deal as well. But there go the Light Cavalry. And I feel like Juan might give himself away again here. Light Cavalry though, into the economy of Cupcake. Cupcake might not keep his population uh, or villager advantage at this rate. If this raiding continues anyway. Oh man. Those guys at the front taking down the knights. They aren't going to handle too much of that. The numbers are too far in his favor. And Juan about to go drop a castle down now as well. He sees the castle here from Cupcake. Will he try and deny it? Is he a castle denier? Well, indeed he is. He's going to run into that TC. He's going to take a little bit of damage. He's going to try and slow this castle down. And that's a lot of light cavalry. However... They're getting taken out very quickly. They're taking a lot of arrow fire from the TC. He's taking arrow fire from the two towers here. But he can run all over this eco. I mean, the, the units here from, from Cupcake, just not enough. Three camels queued out right now. 
And he's going to focus that camel down very quickly if he can. Camel goes down. Another camel on the way out. And he's losing a lot of units. But he can still keep making units. I mean, three stables, man. There's a lot of light cavalry coming across the map right here. A castle going up right here as well at the north of this gold area. That will deny a lot of this farmland. And honestly... Juan with a huge score lead with a massive military advantage and uh, looking like he could potentially do a lot of damage right here. He still needs, however, the defense upgrades on these units. He still has no gold, which is the biggest problem. And he's still not really got any guarantee of getting gold because this castle will cover all of the gold and all of the stone in the center of the map. So Juan still in for a rough ride. He really needs to get the defense upgrades on these light cavalry or attack upgrades because the camels are really going to be a problem for him. More camels coming out for 8th Wonder here, but look at that economy. 8th Wonder, terrible economy uh, management. 1,150 gold. And look at the rating in the back. Cupcake going to find another villager kill here. And uh, maybe even another under here as well because there's no room at the inn. The TC Full of villagers, and these light cows just gonna get a killing spree underneath there. Bad play from 8th Wonder, and on the stone as well, these villagers getting absolutely destroyed. 8th Wonder, where's his food income? Well, it hardly exists. How is he gonna continue making, um, making camels? How is he gonna do that when well, he's got no food income right now? He can't. He's down by a huge amount in terms of military, and he is scrambling. Absolutely scrambling to try and get it back. More villagers going down here at the back of the map. Another one getting surrounded. Poor guy. Plenty of men on horses looking to find or take him or dig him a grave. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But yeah, you guys, I think you guys probably thought that Eighth Wonder was uh, well in control of this game, but unfortunately not. So, this castle right here is certainly making things difficult for Juan. Uh, a couple of trap villagers. Oh my god! Are you. How the hell did that villager get in there? Seriously, look at where that villager is and tell me how she got in there. There is no possible way. Oh, oh, okay. There is a possible way through this TC. Okay. I was gonna say, guys. What the fuck's going on right now? Um, yeah, okay, so the village is kind of like, yeah, hopping around this bit. That's weird. Anyway, Juan, looking good still. Still trying to find some kills. Eighth Wonder, though, has got Town Watch. So, I mean, he sees things coming from a long while away. What's Eighth Wonder's plan? Well, blow me away. Eighth Wonder, uh, not Eighth Wonder, Juan. It's only just gone and clicked up to the Imperial Age. How the hell has he done that? He's not taken a single scrap of gold all game. If we have actually a look at the uh, the gold income, he has got gold income, and that is simply because he has taken uh, or used the market. He's sold wood, he's sold food, he's sold uh, stone at the market, and Juan has just clicked up to the Imperial Age. Once he hits him... He'll continue to sell at the market, and he will pop out a treb, bring this castle down. Meanwhile, these guys at the back, raiding the farms, these villagers getting taken down. I just don't believe that Juan is pulling this off. In the north of the map as well, more villagers going down. He's all over this right now. And this is like the best build order I think I've ever seen. Juan, 54 villagers versus Cupcakes, 42. An eighth wonder here. Even on four TCs, cannot keep up with Juan. He cannot do anything right now. And Juan is just, oh man. What a great last game we saw from him. And what a fantastic game right here as well. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll see a trap coming out. Eighth Wonder might just GG out as soon as he hits, as soon as Juan hits him. I mean, he's sitting on 2,000 gold right now. This is nuts. Absolutely nuts. He's not making any military still. Juan is still finding kills. He's killed 38 units and only lost 24. And once he hits him, that castle won't be standing for much longer as well. I, honestly, this play from Juan is just fantastic. Like, it's so perfect. So he's going to put these guys in the castle. Notice how he's put the weak 
light cavalry in the castle. And that will help them to heal up a little bit. These guys are looking for more kills. Even if they don't find the kills, it's fine. The villagers have to run into the, the watchtower and that slows them down. And now, Juan hits the Imperial Age. He's got enough for a treb. He's used his market. And as soon as that castle goes down... Like, he's gonna get the gold in the middle of the map and it's gotta be over. It just has to be over at that point. Unfortunately, with having no gold, he's still not got... Uh, any more upgrades. No Castle Age upgrades on these Light Cavalry, but then again, neither is Eighth Wonder. Absolutely no upgrades on the Camels. Treb on the way out. He's gonna have the Hill Advantage in the north. And Cupcake, I don't know, he's still got he's still got a stone, so he will try and repair this castle. It's gonna be a while before Juan can take it down. Um, and Juan at the moment, the market rates are probably pretty bad. Wow, they're actually not. I mean, look at that. He can still sell for 53 and 60, uh, 56 for food and wood there. So market rates actually aren't too bad for him either. And the, Oh my god, he's got so many light cavalry. Even the camels can't stop this. Even the camels can't stop this. Juan, 40 kills, 26 losses. And he's just going to get a surround on these camels right here. They are going to get taken out. And I think I've found my new favorite player, like, seriously. He's played so unorthodox these last couple of games, and it's just been so good. There's that trap. The repair's coming in now. Eighth Wonder, though, can't realistically repair too well around that castle there, because, I mean, he's kind of blocked it off. It's He can't come this side. I mean, well, he could, I guess, but Light Cavalry could run in and pick those villagers off very easily. Juan just bringing down those camels... Eighth Wonder just unable to get his TCs working. He's still making camels, I think. No, he's not. He can't even afford that. But, yeah, okay. There's another camel out. He, I think he's got another stable. Yeah, he's got another stable here on the front. He's got a, a decent amount of eco here on the front as well. But look at this. I mean, Juan's nearly got double the population. This castle is on the way down. And Juan right now, unfortunately, cannot afford another castle. But he can afford more stables. And Juan is pumping these units out from six or seven stables right now. There go the light cavalry. And he is going to just, oh, well, potentially suicide. But it's GG. Eighth wonder, calling it right there. He is absolutely overrun by the light calves. And what a game from Juan. Eighth wonder at the end with 2,000... 400 gold. I, you've got to ask yourself, like, how has how's he done that? But, wow. Just fantastic play. Like, the bait here, like, just, Cupcake took it. He just like, oh, he's walling up. He's obviously fast castling. In come the scouts. They do a bit of damage, not a huge amount. Then he goes for three stables. Spams like cavalry. Absolutely shuts him down. Buys his, well, sells his way up to the Imperial Age. He didn't mine a single bit of gold that entire game. And yet here he is, Imperial Age, Castle here, Trebuchet here, Light Cavalry everywhere. And what a fantastic game from Juan. Like, seriously, those, that, that deserves to go in the Epic series right there. That was insanely good. As well as that last game as well. So I think Juan certainly gaining a few fans this last couple of games, and I'm looking forward to seeing some more from him. I'll uh, do some more commentary of Juan's games on Saturday when our next stream, Expert Games, as well. Uh, Cupcake could have gone Pikes. I mean, he had no food, though. That's the problem. His food income was really poor. You know, he had a good amount of farms, but if we have a look at Juan's economy, just look at this. He's farming like crazy. And he did handcart, remember, really early as well. And, you know, he did plow really early. He just, he was all over it. Great play. Absolutely great play. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that game. I didn't quite expect it to be 